Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Goldbridge Saves Football. And we are back because it's the return of proper football, none of this international football rubbish. We're here to talk about probably the biggest game of the season as Arsenal visit Manchester City. Also, my club, Manchester United, are back. Back in action, but are they back in traction? We'll see about that. That's not the word, traction. That sounds like they're about to get into a crash. No, fine, if you've got a good bit of traction. And you, yeah, you know. bit of grip. Yeah, yeah. Like an F1 car on some super soft set and some fast yeah. times. Momentum is what I'm talking about. Also, we've got some crackers uh, in the show. We will have the return of Goldbridge. We'll be uh, catching up with that. Also, some brilliant either ors. And we will be talking about the sham at the bottom of the league. And it's Easter. So we're also going to bring in some fun, like what's your favourite Easter egg? I think that's going to be very debatable. Will, how are you? Yeah, very well, thank you. You mentioned the Premier League's back and how excited you were yet again I tried to bring up England in the running order. We got a little mention and you were like, that's it. Go home. Next upload on That's Football. Mourinho in. Southgate out. What are you doing to me? Can we talk about England? Is it off the cards? No, not on here. No, okay. no one wants it. It's the return of the Premier League. Well, and tell what, that to yourself. What better way to return to the Premier League than a top of the table clash between Arsenal and Man City. It's do or die for Arsenal's title hopes. Is that too strong, Will? I don't think it is. No, because like we've said, speaking of traction, this is Manchester City's traction era, isn't mm. it? When they get into your Marches, your Aprils, your May, that's when they put their super softs on and get going. So hopefully for the sake of the Premier League and the future of football, Arsenal can get bloody three points here Liverpool can do it and then have we got a top two then I mean they're only four points clear but we're setting a bit of a marker down then I don't see it I think that the Come on. I think the international break is badly timed for Arsenal they had a good momentum yeah. um, I think it's always traditionally and stereotypically difficult to go away from home after an international break because there's a bit yeah. of a hangover um, everything is playing into Man City's hands Anthony Taylor is the referee say no more but no I, I don't think Arsenal can win this game I really want them to win it but I don't think they can I think Man City every time I've seen Arsenal play um, Manchester City, even the Etihad, uh, even the Emirates game, where I know they weren't and Kovacic should have been sent off, but Arsenal weren't their normal selves that day. I worry about the dynamic between Arteta and Pep. There's too much bloody respect there. And we know what Pep's like. He loves it when it's just shake hands. Oh, hello. Here we are. You know, mm -hmm. you've got to get at them. And I just don't know whether Arsenal have got the belief and aggression to go to the Etihad, forget all the handshakes and go up yours, we're here because this is their time. This is their time to shine and I want them to, but I, I, I think there's going to be too much respect. They're going to let Man City have the ball and it'll end up one or two nil to City. Uh, no, I disagree. And I think this is where we could really see a change in momentum and a change for the future because I really think, I, I probably naively have that view of Arsenal when their top six record, but H put a good tweet out in the week, which Ian Wright interacted with to sort of boost this Arsenal morale going forward that um, only Manchester City have got more league wins than Arsenal against the big six since Mikel Arteta's appointment in December 2019. So they've only got one more point, Man City, than Arsenal in big, against big six clubs. It's a belief thing. As I said, I think that Arsenal have to go there aggressive and believe in themselves. That's why they've and... got the dog, win. What? The, the dog's called win. Who? Arsenal's got a dog called win. So that's where they get the belief from. Never heard of it. You have? You've not have seen I... the Labrador? No. Win. Oh, brilliant. I mean, the morale's absolutely oozing from that. Oh God, yeah. Don't even know about it. But they have to go there and believe and be aggressive because if they don't, Man City will just grind them down. They can't just sit back. I think they have got a good defence. I think their midfield is very good. Arsenal on their day, I believe, are, Man are better than Man City at the moment. I think especially since Christmas. But I, I, just, I just detect that... I, I, I want to be wrong. I want to be wrong. And look, I hope it gets the Arsenal fans up. It gets Arsenal fans up that people are writing them off. But I'm going to be in the writing them off club. I think they will go there. Show we've seen it before. Arteta lives right up the arse of Pep. I love Arteta. I think he's done a great job there. But he lives right up the arse of Pep. No. And Pep loves that. It's a big game. But respect to Arsenal. Respect to Arteta. Forget your respect, Pep. I don't want your respect. We're coming there. We're going to get right at you. And I couldn't give a toss whether we're mates or not. But I think Arteta will go there and be too respectful. I think this. He is... won't be jumping around on the touchline, going, "Yeah, yeah." He'll be like, "Sorry, Pep. Can I move? It? Can I come out my box yet? I no. Think... Get back in your box. I'm the boss." I think this is where the apprentice becomes the master. Hope so. I think this is where is Ob that... Obi Wan Kenobi. <laughs> I'm not going to go down that path. I'm going to get it wrong. Obi Wan. 
was the master yeah. and Anakin was the apprentice. Okay, yeah, and that works as well because Arteta's always had that little bit of evil maybe lurking behind and this is where he unleashes the force against Manchester City and then when he goes for the answer, he just nuts Pep and then the game's on. That's pre-match, I'm saying that's going to happen. I th- I th- but you know what? I think something like that needs to happen. We're going to get the what, press... What, a headbutt? No. <laughs> I think, yeah, yeah, please. Um, no, uh, never, never. Violence and football don't mix. Also, never headbutt a bold man. Yeah, because it could hurt. Yeah. Press conferences, I guarantee it's all respectful. I mean, I watched that brilliant clip of uh, Sir Alex Ferguson we were on about the other day when, the, when we were behind Newcastle and Keegan. Oh, yeah, yeah. And somebody was saying, do you think he meant it? I was like, oh, 100%. He did it to Benitez as well. He knew yeah, exactly yeah. what he was doing. If people don't bite, you've lost nothing. But if they do bite, you've gained everything. And I think that, I think Arsenal have just got to go there with no regrets. Um, they can't go there and park the bus. You got to go there, will, and, and a, a draw is a good result for Arsenal. Yeah, it is yeah. a good result, but I'm yeah, I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go Man City to win it. I think this Arsenal side are better than last year's, and I think this Manchester City side is worse than last year's. That's probably the best analysis you've ever done. Thank you, and I think that's what gives me hope, belief, a new hope. If we're carrying on with the Star Wars, if you don't like Star Wars, you're screwed here. Yeah, yeah. Wait for the wrestling references. Uh, no, I, I, I think it'll be a score draw, but in a positive way for Arsenal. I just want to say I absolutely am not digging Arsenal out. They've been brilliant. I want you to win. I'm just trying to jinx you and say you're not going to win because yeah. um, you're going to go up there and show too much respect to Man City. And if they're handshaking in the bloody tunnel, forget it. It's over. No. Uh, one of the things where... I think Declan Rice could be key in this game. Well, great little mention of Declan Rice because uh, he was on England duty speaking at the press conference there and he said he was chatting to John Stones about the upcoming game and he said, you're looking forward to it. And John Stones said, who have we got? And Uh, he was like, you're playing us, Arsenal, on top of the league clash. Get out. No? Absolutely not having that. So John John Stones is basically saying to Declan Rice, who have we got got at the weekend? Yeah. Either, that's one of two things, either that is the pinnacle of arrogance of the modern footballer that they just don't care, they just care. I bet he knows how much he's getting paid this week. No, I, I think it's more of a robotic thing of Manchester City, of like, you know, who who've we got next, it doesn't matter, we're going to beat them. I've never known that. I mean, I don't support Man City or Arsenal, I've known about this game for weeks, that's, that's nonsense. Or it's just... Mind uh, games? Mind games, maybe. John yeah. Stone's mind games. He's got John that Stone. Tommy Shelby look to him. Yeah, and Tommy Shelby, be. notorious for mind games. He might not be playing anyway. He might be injured. No, I mean, that's been a big one, hasn't it? Of people pulling out left, right and centre. Kyle Walker as well. Yeah. Um, Kyle Walker. What? The, the big right back debate. Oh, yeah. I've got an either or down here because one man's having a good season, one man's tailing off. Ben White or Kyle Walker for you? Oh, uh, uh, see what you've done here. Yeah. Well, look, for me, <laughs> I, I actually think Arsenal need to buy a right back. Some might say they already did with Timber. But I think it gets to a point where I always thought that Ben White was a centre-back filling in at right back. But that's been going on for two years now. So I think you've got to say he's a centre-back who's transformed into a right back. And Arsenal paid significant money for him. I think they paid 40, 50 million quid. I'm quite happy to say that Ben White is a better right back than Kyle Walker. And your haters are going to pile on now. They're going to be clipping it up going, look at Goldbridge, he's done it again. But... I thought Niall was laughing off camera then. He no, can shut up. He you was know, choking on your bloody shit opinions. No, you know what? He said Chelsea aren't a big club. Went to uh, Cardiff to do a bit of a shoot with Will. <laughs> Fell over in the mud. Chelsea fans, justice served by God. You'd think he'd be busy this weekend with Easter. He wasn't busy enough to put Niall in the mud for his stupid opinions. He's just been smirking about Ben White. God knows what God's going to give him this Easter now. It's not going to be an egg. No, it's more like in the face. But I, yeah, but your big thing with Kyle Walker is that he's just pace. Yeah, but, but that is one element of it, and he has got that. Uh, there's nothing wrong. That's with like that. going Peter Crouch is at all. Yeah, no. Look, Kyle Walker, pace. Take it away. I think he's in the championship. I've said that before. But, but pace is not like a haircut. You know, it, yeah, exactly, it's, it's yeah. an attribute. But you treat it like a haircut. It's an attribute, and, like and, and it's a fair attribute. What I'm saying is that. If I'm picking a combined 11, and we can shoot and do that if you want, but I'm going to go Ben White over Kyle Walker because I watch football and I, what, I, what I detest about football is that lazy opinions. It's like the amount of people over the last couple of years who would put Ruben Diaz in, oh, it's got to be Diaz and Van Dyke. No, it's not got to be Diaz and Van Dyke. It's got to be Van Dyke and use your brains because I think there's a laziness around Kyle Walker that he's automatically a brilliant right back. But if you watch him this season... And I haven't even watched Man City that much. But when I have watched them, 
time and time again, he's been at fault for goals because he relies on his pace. Like, remember, was it Anthony Gordon when they played Newcastle? And he gives him 20 metres and he's sort of like, I'm quick, I'll catch him up. But by the time he's got over there, Gordon waits for him, skips past him and curls it in. I think Carl Walker has dropped off. And I think this is why New Man City were thinking about selling him in the summer, because I think that his concentration levels have dropped off. He's still a fantastic fullback. And I understand why Pep wanted to keep him because that recovery pace is massive. We've seen it work for England, like work for England in the Euros. He got yeah, Declan yeah. Rice out of trouble. But Ben White, at some point, people have got to acknowledge the fact that he's a right back consistently for an Arsenal team that has the best defence in the league. And he doesn't get exposed. And I think he's massively underrated. Yeah, but this is based on Ben White having a phenomenal... You know, if we go back to the last analogy, it's like um, Ben White's tracking and trending this season and he's having a great year. Because for, when I watch it, I was lucky enough to watch Arsenal a few times last year and he just he was good at right back, but it just felt a bit out of sorts. For his, him. Re, his relationship with Saka is, is yeah, incredible. Yeah, and that's developed, but he yeah. needs to do this next year. He's like Gary Neville, you know. Ben White is like the modern day Gary Neville. He has absolutely not got the credit he deserves, but he is getting better. Ben White over Kyle Walker this season for me is such an yeah, easy Yeah, this one. season, but you were sort of getting that ben, you'd have Kyle Walker, Ben White over Kyle Walker of all time. What's all time? time. So this time with Mark Goldbridge, forget Alan I Partridge. just think you're very, you discredit Kyle Walker so much. I don't. And he's, I having, don't. he's having a bad season. Yeah, but players do have a bad season. He's having a bad season, and in that, and and therefore the analysis around him is lazy because people are living off the past. Well, you can shoot from the hip now, then cowboy, because let's do a combined eleven, but just from the hip. Okay. Uh, Goalie Edison. Edison. Kyle Walker, right back. Ben White, right back. Uh, Saliba, John Stones. Yeah. Left back. Left back's difficult. I'd probably go Aki. Gvardio sips in there as well. No, I'd, go Aki. I'd go Aki. I'll bow to your grace on that. Uh, midfield, Rodri and Rice. Rodri and Rice. It's a bit defensive, but yeah. I can't leave one out. And Declan Rice can have a little bit more. He can have the... a wonderful. Yeah, he can have a little me. me you, you take him to uh, Tesco. He's not opposed to wandering into the chocolate aisle. Yeah, exactly. He'd have a couple of eggs coming round. He'd be. He'd have two eggs under his basket. And, yeah, and you'd be saying, "What's going on there?" Kevin De Bruyne in front. Yeah. And then Saka, Foden, Haaland. Yeah. Brilliant. Shake your hand on that then. Yeah. Congratulations. Agree on that one. Yeah. Manager, Arteta. No chance. Yeah. Don't be stupid. Arteta's better than Pep. Now, that's a road I'm not going to go down yet. Bruce Arena. Give me a couple of years. Um, yeah, lovely stuff. Um, what? Uh, well, we'll look, look, the title race, Liverpool got Brighton at the weekend. You'd expect them to win there. I think we're heading into a massive... Um, a massive few weeks, Champions League as well. Three Premier League games coming up in the space of about eight days. International window done. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, it's but what it's do you think of Gareth Southgate? No, I'm joking. No. Um, you mentioned Anfield there. Liverpool playing Brighton. Brighton travelling to Anfield is it a bit of an audition for Deserby. People oh. linking him with the job. I've heard shouts of Alonso is right for Liverpool, but maybe not now. Does that put Deserby in the prime spot? I think massively underrated even for this season because you're when we've been chatting about him overrated. Previous, you can say under or over. Underrated still. Overrated would be the right word. Because I think people because of Brighton's success last year just automatically think, right, that's them in the top six, seven. And no, they're still far above punching what they should be doing. No. No, absolutely not. I think that uh, De Zerbi is a massive red flag. Apparently, I, I heard over the international break that his release clause would be around 20 million quid as well, which is a lot of money to pay for a manager. Brighton always tie these sort of things down. But more interestingly, I, I don't think I, I wouldn't go there if I was Liverpool. I think it's a massive risk. On the one hand, it could be revolutionary. On the other hand, you can imagine in a year's time, he's getting the sack. So I wouldn't go anywhere near him if I was Liverpool. Although that's a very interesting story to track as to where they're going to go. But I would say this, De Zerbi, right? Three big vulnerable jobs, Chelsea, Newcastle, Manchester United. How many of those three jobs would you would you swap Pochettino for De Zerbi? Would you swap Howe for De Zerbi? Would you swap Ten Hag for De Zerbi? Absolutely not. I wouldn't spend 20 million to replace Howe with Deserby. I wouldn't spend 20 million to replace Pochettino with Deserby. And I certainly wouldn't be swapping 20 million. I'd be terrified if United did that. I, look, good coach, but Deserby for me is a little bit like those old Neapolitan ice creams. You know, where you got the ke the not the ketchup the, flavored ice cream. That'd be sick. Uh, no, the strawberry, the vanilla, and chocolate. And look, I've had a bit of chocolate, I've had a bit of I've had a bit of vanilla. Is it strawberry is or is it ketchup? You know, I want to I want to know what happens in season three. I just think you're being disrespectful towards Deserby, to be honest. Twenty million pounds is a lot of money to be sacking a decent manager for a 
twenty million pound gamble. No, but I'm saying about talking about the Liverpool job. Liverpool job's bigger than the Man United job. Also, but uh, also- I'm not Liverpool are not bigger than Man United. What I'm saying is that Liverpool are a team challenging for the title with a very very good squad, and 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 you inherit that from Klopp. He can't have that job. But also, you go back to the biggest thing we spoke about. I hope he does take the job. By the way, could weaken Liverpool. Yeah, but De Zerbi against Southgate would be very Especially interesting. Especially with his, um, I'm not, what's it, De Zerbi said? I'm not interested, I put playing uh, yeah. football over winning uh, trophies. Having a good time, basically. Good luck with that at Liverpool. Yeah. No, but th- this is legacy of Klopp, isn't it? And the biggest one of that was when Fergie left. Like, So do you look at that and what Moyes did, try to replace the coach and stuff, bring his style of football, or do you just go, right, let's just stick with the Jurgen Klopp model? I think De Zerbi's too weak for Liverpool as well. He works in a model at Brighton. If you know, you can't you can't argue about this. I'll Brighton's try. Brighton's Brighton's punching above their weight, and yet they have a dictatorship above De Zerbi where he has no control over transfers. Yeah, but that's modern football, though. No, you have that at Liverpool. No, he doesn't well, Marcus have that. Marcus Edwards coming no, in. No, Liverpool. Yeah, but how do you know that's not going to be the case? Going not Marcus Edwards. But that's what I mean. Edwards, the modern manager, the Artetas, the Peps, the Klops, the Ainge, the uh, the Ainge. Emerys. They have a say on transfers. They don't. Yeah, say, but it's still part of a committee. But at Brighton, there is no say. You are the you are the coach. So uh, he's going to walk into Liverpool and go, "I've got my own. I've, I've been suppressed for years. Let's go and get uh, Veghorst." No, I think I think that the structure is very common. What they have at Brighton, maybe it more Not leans on, levels. Maybe it leans more on that. But I, I don't think that would be like out of character for him to go in there and. I think it's a terrible idea. Let us know what you think. How would you rank those managers, actually, just because there's four lovely names there? Would you go De Zerbi, Poch, Hal, Ten Hag? One Uh, to four. Four to one. I think Ten Hag, one. (laughs) I think um, it's tough, two, three and four, because they're all very, very close together, actually. Uh, I think Eddie Howe's done a great job at Newcastle, so I'd probably put him in at number two. Uh, Pochettino over De Zerbi. I'd probably put De Zerbi over Pochettino. Just on the last two seasons... Yeah. Okay. I mean, Pochettino should be the best of all four. Yeah. But I think he's fell off massively. De Zerbi's a massive risk. And I think Ten Hag and Eddie Howe deserve the top two spots based on the last two years. Interesting. People are going to dislike that, but it's fact. Yeah. Well, you just you can't argue you're with facts. Out facts you can't you? argue with facts. Steaming hot facts. Um, one thing we're going to chat about just before. I had a steaming hot fact, Funks. Did you? Yeah. You did drop one in the toilet this morning. It stinks. Um, before we get into the rest of the Premier League action. Fact, facts has used to be hot, actually, but I'm mean, a very what? boring topic. You know, no, you know, like a fax that used to come yeah, through yeah, the machine. Yeah, yeah. Don't know whether they invent for anybody else. They did. They do come out warm. Nice. It was always a nice thing to take a warm fax out of the I know machine. you do the same Does anyone me. get faxes anymore? That was the most boring thing that's ever been said on this podcast, I think. It will hit a niche of about yeah. three. They'll go, he's right, you know, Marjorie. And you still use he's a, right, Marjorie. You still use a pager as well, don't you? I, can't, I never used a pager. Um, Ivan Tony sort of ties into this top four people pushing for Champions League. At the start of the season, at the start of this year, it was Arsenal, Man United. This week, I see he's been linked with West Ham. Well, uh, it's... Oh, his interview's costing him. It's Man United Brentford. This is where we're going, isn't it? Yeah. Like we, we we're just we're still summarising the return of the Premier League. And uh, Ivan Tony's been linked to Man United this week. He's been linked to Arsenal. He's been linked to Chelsea. He's now been linked to West Ham. Yep. Um, he's put. You know, he'll be really excited about that game on Saturday night because regardless of whether United wants him, it's it's a televised game. Man United. Under he, the lights. He, he scores a couple of goals in that game, and suddenly he's so he, he'll be mega motivated for that. Um. What I find about, look, Man United aren't going to go for Tony unless something drastic changes. He's going to cost north of 60, 70 million pounds. We know his personality. He, he's going to want to be the main man. We've got Rasmus. We've, we're trying to build something. We need a striker that's not that expensive that comes in and is willing to work with or under Rasmus uh, on the bench. So Ivan Tony doesn't fit that profile. What I find funny or weird with Ivan Tony, Will, and everybody listening is why is it and he played well for England the other night. Yeah. And he's a definite proven Premier League goal scorer. Mm-hmm. Chelsea need a striker. Arsenal need a striker. Man United need a striker. Everyone always needs a striker. And yet it feels to me with Tony that he's having to do a lot of legwork himself. You know, he's almost his own agent. He's having to push himself out there. There's some reason, maybe it's the price, I don't know. But yeah. there's some reason that it, there isn't this big take. And I, I, I heard that Arsenal are a bit concerned about disrupting the unit and I, I don't think that means that Ivan Tony's a bad character but you could see him going in there and it's a very stable environment and he is a bit of a big time Charlie I suppose in the sense that he's believes in himself 
he's got that striker arrogance. Yeah. Could it disrupt it a little bit? I think Chelsea would be good for him because Chelsea are a young team and they almost need that arrogant striker to say, look, I'm the guy to put the, you know, take the responsibility. I think, I think, I think he'd be a good striker for Chelsea, but it does surprise me that there doesn't seem to like Chelsea would have that locked down. Arsenal would have that locked down in yeah. March and it doesn't come across that it's locked down. And it's a bit weird why he's been linked with so many different clubs. It's almost like people are a bit reluctant and it could be the prize. Yeah. Well, look, this is a, you're speaking to a player, a, a manager that signed him. I signed him for Tottenham in the January, got him for 23 million due to his Tottenham. contract. Um, and I very much bought him in as that second striker and he's doing a job for me, Mark. I, I could see Ange putting a big arm around his shoulder. Let's, yeah. Let's, let's, yeah, let's. Could, let's could, yeah, could Let's go there. and watch neighbours. Maybe I'm setting the scene for him. But I just think, I almost tie it back to NFL stuff where if you're coming out of the draft, you have to have all these interviews with different clubs and they're basing it on your personality and what you've done. Obviously, it comes off the back of the betting ban, which I'm not saying is going to be, that's been dealt with now, but that, that still happened. And then also you look at these interviews that come out seemingly every week of like, I think he was touting himself to Real Madrid. Well, not touting himself, but he was like, I'd love Madrid. So it's just a bit strange. Maybe we're getting old and this is the modern way. And have, I'm and not opposed that. to it. I mean, look, it, it makes for good conversation. I just I just think that you don't need to do it. Maybe if, it is just so obvious. Like, it, we all know he's not going to stay at Brentford. Yeah. Brentford fans know he's not going to say it. So maybe it's not that much of a big deal he's doing that. And also, I think we live in a world now, and we will say it on the podcast and others won't. You know, you won't get this on the mainstream because they're terrified for some reason about speaking the truth. But look, we've seen it at United. We've seen it at other clubs. You buy a talented player and there's a problem off the field. It could be mental health issues. It could be, you know, laziness. It could be, you know, not realising the opportunity they've got, not working hard, whatever. Humans are humans. We're not going to criticise that. But let's be clear. Ivan Tony was found guilty and served half a season ban for betting breaches. It would be remiss of any high-level football club where money matters to not go... There's, you know, there's a we we've got to look at this and go. Yeah. Is it is it worth worth doing it? Because as we know, I don't know whether it is an addiction. I've not read enough about it, but people relapse, yeah. and I think clubs need to you know be careful of that. I'd I'd hate to think that that would be a reason why clubs wouldn't go for Ivan Tony though, because as I said, he played he plays plays for England. Like if England had a problem, they wouldn't do it. Um, I think he played well for England. I think proven over a couple of seasons scoring goals for Brentford. As I said, for me, I think it might be the price and the disruption bringing in a number one striker who believes in themselves. Arsenal maybe don't want that. United don't need that. But I think Chelsea's the best fit for me. And then, but you also, you speak about that. It's like the on the research side of things with Newcastle and Tonyali as well. And obviously that just came out, what, within six weeks of the season? Also, maybe there's a bit of arrogance because I look at it and I think it'd be good for Chelsea, but maybe Chelsea go, well, we want better than that. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's maybe a bit of arrogance. Maybe that's why the West Ham links. Are there, yeah, maybe, maybe there's some arrogance from clubs or we don't we want better than that. But actually, he is proven in the Premier League. Um, should we have a look at those Champions League spots? Because you mentioned Manchester United. You said they are back. The traction is down, but Newcastle... Uh, no, not Newcastle. They're well out of it. Sorry, Forget Newcastle. that. The season <laughs> over. Sorry. Uh, Villa Wolves, big game. The fog is firmly on the time there. Yeah, And, nice. and they're lost in it. Yeah, lovely stuff. Um, and Tottenham have got Luton, which you think they'd win, but never back against Luton, which you've been doing all year. And I've told you you're wrong for I that. I think away from home, that should be straightforward for and Tottenham. Was, yeah, Man United, Brentford. But... It Mm, it's a tricky one. Well, I did it on the preview on the United stand. Um, there, There is a 7% chance of a clean sheet in a home game for Brentford. So there's going to be goals. There's an over an 85% chance that both teams score. Um, there will be goals in that game. Um, What's but good Man for TV? Yeah, Man United need to win it. And then Villa home to Wolves. I mean, that that could be interesting. It's uh, well, yeah, normally never. tends to be a draw. I know it's not technically a derby but they're pretty close uh, yeah, yeah I think with us being in the championship yeah. for so long it tends to be a 1-1 or a 0-0 that which would be a, a good result so for derby United. in my WhatsApp chat I'll tell you it goes off in there um, one of the things as well looking down the bottom Andros Townsend came out in the press this week it was quite interesting obviously he's at Luton former Everton player just speaking about the mindset of players going into the weekend outside the relegation but then teams can appeal against their points ban and then all of a sudden they're they're back out of it and it's for off the pitch stuff but just sort of ties into the feel of this maybe a bit of a sham of the Premier League this year. I think the Premier League this season somehow has superseded last season which I thought was fantastic um, you know uh, as I said a couple of weeks ago Fulham sort of epitomised why this league is so good because it's what the 
mid-table teams do to the big teams and that, you know, that make it so competitive. But there is a dark side to this, Star Wars, and um, that is that there are elements of this Premier League, which is a sham. We've spoken about the integrity of the title race. I'm very concerned if Man City win it by a point. I think the title has no integrity because of the points that have been taken away, I believe, from Liverpool and Arsenal. But also in the relegation zone, completely different. You're right. Everton's had a 10 to a 6, might be getting another one. Um, Forest have had a 4. And they're trying to appeal that. And they're that. trying to appeal that. I, the big problem with this is that people will go, it doesn't matter, it'll all come out in the wash. But the problem is, if you're Luton going to Spurs, you probably go there and go, point is quite good. Yeah. Whereas if Forest get a couple of points back, you go in, actually, we need... To, it's the way you approach a game. Yeah, yeah. Like, we're in that point now where some relegation teams start playing like they're Barcelona. Yeah. You never understand it. They've been shit all season and then suddenly... They can beat anybody because it's 11 against 11 and they're going to get a 50% pay cut if they go down. So I, I, I do sympathise with the teams down there. And it's the same for Forrest as well. I mean, the players aren't, aren't at fault for the deduction. It's the same for Everton as well. You think you might be safe. Oh, you're not. You are. You are. It's, it, it's ridiculous. And uh, Well, I think one of the, oh, I can't remember if it's Forrest or Everton, the last appeal date for that is after the last game of the season. Uh, and that just can't happen going forward. I mean, hopefully, look, sometimes there has to be these ridiculous scenarios to get where we need to be. FFP needs to have teeth and then, you know, get needs through. It to be done and done, dusted yeah, a lot They need earlier. a quick process. And uh, I think, you know, obviously there'll be a lot of people in the chat whenever we talk about this saying, what about Man City? And exactly, I mean, they've won a treble with 115 charges over them. They might win a treble again. Well, I think that's what tied into my big club analysis because like the Manchester City stuff is still pending really mm. with these charges. Well, and look, we don't know what's going to happen with Man City, but what I will say is the, that what's happened to Everton and Forest is is about one percent of what Man City are accused of. Yeah. So, you're, you've got a team that's winning titles that, if things go even a little bit out of them one one five, yeah. then they're getting points deductions, which would take. Look, let's let's just give a soundbite. Man City's one hundred and fifteen charges are way, 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 way bigger than Everton and Forest. You take four points off Man City, Liverpool or Arsenal are winning the league and yet they could win the league again. The integrity is 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 in the mud. Yeah. And we've still got to wait and we don't know an answer to it. Talking about the mud, a bit like chocolate, Easter weekend. Yeah, crowbarred that in, didn't you? Yeah, had are you to. big fan? Do you still eat your eggs? You're on a bit of a sugar kick. I'm at trying the moment, to I'm yeah. trying to kick it. I've not really eaten much chocolate. It's probably going to be the it's going to be my first chocolate free Easter. Yeah. And uh, I think that uh, but I have had many uh, many a favorite and I was down Sainsbury's the other day and I saw some fantastic Easter eggs. A randoms one, which I like randoms but they're sweets, they're not chocolate. How does that work? Are you a, like are a you fruit pro? pastel? Yeah, randoms is sort of the evolution of the fruit pastel, but it's an Easter egg with a big packet of randoms. Right, okay. Which I quite like because my favorite chocolate bar is that uh, Cadbury's Marvellous creations where you get a bit of jelly in it, a bit of uh, popping candy. Bit noncy, that. Can't say that. <laughs> I'll sue you. So you're basically calling me a chocolate bar nonce? Yes. Yeah, well, is that all right? Jeremy Vine is doing Barton. I'll you're doing be, me. You're in for my lawyers now. Well, imagine that great court case that would be. It'd be brilliant. It would be box it's office. Cabbage get Niall to come and film it. Um, no, I think um, uh, the, my favourite ones were the ones where you got the mug. They don't seem to do them anymore. Every Easter, I'll yeah. be there. Also, the ones where you get like you get a big egg, and then you're getting like two Kit Kat junkies in there as well. Yeah. Also, I feel like uh, back in the day they used to do the um, sweet or the chocolate inside the egg. So yeah. It'd be yeah, like yeah. a Kinder, but now they just seem to place it in the top of the in the packaging. Yeah. Discuss. Yeah, I hated that with the first year it happened when I opened the egg and there was nothing in there. Yeah. And I'd already thrown the box away. Oh no! And then somebody said, "Go in the bin. You'll probably find them." Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah Straight yeah. in there. Well, um. The... Let us know in the comments what's your favourite Easter egg. Uh, oh, Cadbury's or Cadbury's eggs yeah. or what is basically Mars Galaxy. Well, actually. being from the where I am, I can't obviously go against Cadbury because it's obviously a Midlands institution. But yeah. I, the Galaxy chocolate in small amounts because it's very rich and very you get your mouth gets a bit like sweeter. It's definitely sweeter. Let me just do that. If everyone closes their eyes, and that's me in a Galaxy there. Um, Could be no, eating something else. Yeah, it's a bit. It's a bit clay like. Cleggy, is that a word? That's 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 what you get on your ass. Is it? Clag nuts, isn't it? Or something. I don't know. <laughs> don't know how I've heard it before. Um if you are struggling with that, then get I in touch know. in the spot the Spotify comments well, are private. Other. I'm gonna say Cadbury's because there's more chance of them doing a brand deal with us than anybody We're else. Up the road, aren't they? Yeah. Would um, be a good fit. 
Yeah. Well, speaking of brand deals, uh, we were chatting off air and I was saying oh, what would be some perfect brand deals for you. I think Peter Crouch this week's done one with Bovril. Does he? Which would be right up your street. I don't know. I've, no, I'd, I'd pass on that. I did pass on that and they obviously went to Crouchy. Yeah, no. I got the email and said, not, not really my cup of tea. <laughs> Very Yay! good. Yeah. Yeah, love, love, love. Um, I think Giacomo would be good for you. Get out. I've never been on the website in my life. Burton's. No, no, yeah. no. I'd be better. Next would be perfect for me. Yeah, but as I told you, Gary Lineker is the new Next ambassador. Looking really good as well. Lineker. Uh, yeah. Lineker. I think he's part of their signature collection or whatever it is. Oh Looking really God. nice. I mean, what, what demographic are they going for then, then? The over 60s? Uh, Should have gone for me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll tell you who you'd be good for. Go on. Poundland. Oh, very good. Yeah, Yeah, really good. Yeah, Yeah, nice. That'd be very good. Where everything's not a pound now, which goes against the... I think think I'd be really good for, like, Reese. Get a lot of stuff from them. Reese's Pieces? Yeah, they're very good clothing. Um, John Lewis. You're not John Lewis, Hugo Boss. You're Audi or Lidl. Porsche. (laughs) Uh, Get in the chat. Brands that'd be good for me and brands that'd be good for Will. Uh, start start with Poundland and uh, yeah, well, well with... Iceland had uh, Kerry Katona you know Iceland have had some good ones over the years and you should never not that. the best thing of Iceland you ever the Greggs direct from Iceland no you just get well because obviously they just come in frozen to Greggs so you just get the actual Greggs products in your freezer Greggs would be good I've, I've not been to Greggs in ages as well so if you want to do a brand new or uh, alcohol brands as well yeah be great for this pub setting wow well, yeah come on g- give us some nuts yeah nuts KP Beers, Heineken, ciders. Yeah, we'd love all that. You, imagine that behind us in the background. You'd love it. Absolutely love it. Um, anyway, we've just realised we're... we're uh, Running out of time. No, we, we're audio. People will be going, what we're meant to be looking at. Oh, yeah. Imagine. Yeah. Um, right, what else have we got? We've got Goldbridge, the most important thing of the whole no, podcast. there was something else I wanted to talk about. You've, 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 you've thrown me. What I've was not, it? I've got the Zerbi, Tony, Kyle Walker, Ben White. Yeah. yeah, got it all down, mate. Got it all down. Yeah. Okay, so we're on to Goldbridge already. We're on to Goldbridge, yeah. Um, 48-39 was the score before the last game. It's been so long because of international breaks. Ten-point gap. Um, uh, Mo- that basically, Mooney scored two. Mooney's scored two for you, and I got zero again. So it's a 12-point tw- tw- gap? 50-39. 11-point gap? Yeah. This is, this is... I don't even know why we're bothering. I'm just doing it for charity now. Yeah. Um, do you want to go first or me? Um, well, you're in the lead, so you've got preference. Um, I'll go first and I'm going to go... Uh, no, you can go first because you're rubbish. I'll go Cole Palmer to score against Burnley. Cole Palmer against Burnley. Well play done. a minute for England. Okay, I'm going to start off with the half past 12 kickoff, which is Newcastle against, against West Ham. Remember, you get a point for every goal they score and we have to pick a defender where we get three points and a goalkeeper for a clean sheet. Uh, I'm going to go Newcastle against West Ham. I don't know who's fit. People always laugh and go, ah, he's picked somebody who's well, not fit. It's a fit. Thursday as well we record yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're not that, you know, we're not we're not bloody, I nearly said virgins. That's not fair. No. Well, no. You... There's nothing wrong with being a virgin. I meant like a football hipster. That's what I meant. You're not on the stats boards every day. You're yeah. not on injury list. We'll remove the virgin bit. Um, Newcastle, West Ham, Isaac. Okay. He's probably bloody injured. I'm going to go for... Sheffield United versus Fulham. I'm going to go for Mooney's. Good. Uh, I will go to Chelsea against Burnley and I will also go for, uh, uh, not your player, I will go for Raheem Sterling. Wow, interesting. One of the worst games he's ever had in his career recently. Yeah. Hoping for a comeback for you there. Late Euro surge. No, please. Uh, I'll go Brentford, Manchester United and I'll go for Ivan Tony. Well, I am going to go Brentford, Manchester United because there will definitely be goals in this game and I'm going to go with... Rasmus. No. Rasmus. Well, no, I'm going to go Rashford. 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 Yeah. Uh, last time I did that, everyone laughed and he scored. Yes, he did. I wasn't laughing. I was crying. Liverpool versus Brighton. I've gone for Darwin Nunes. Uh, Tottenham Luton. Obviously, there's going to be goals in that game and I'm going to go for... I don't know whether he's fit, so I, can't, I was going to go Richarlison. Mm-hmm. That would hurt if he did score. So I'm going to just go with Son. I'm going to revisit one of my, and fans of the podcast will remember this famous shout. I'm going to go for Declan Rice to score against Manchester City. Hilarious. Absolute hilarious. Who did you go from the Liverpool game? Um, Darwin Nunes. Okay, I will go with Diaz. Nice. 
Um, defender to score. Actually, just on that, what about this Diaz to Spain thing? That I think was it. it. Well remembered. That was it, yeah. Yeah, well, his dad's come out in the press and said that he wants to go to Spain, sort of Madrid, Barca, Atletico. I don't know, it just feels a bit like he's feels- having a bit of an off... Not His, his target, his, his levels were fantastic, weren't they, first season? They've dropped off and now he wants to move. What's it all about? What what's what's going? On? His dad has been kidnapped. Liverpool have stood by him yeah. and his dad, and then his dad gets released, and he's like, "Yeah, I want to go to Madrid now." Yeah. He's living his life. He's just going, "You know what, son? I've seen what I've seen. I've seen. I've seen what death could look like. It, yeah. it was staring me in the face. Uh, I've, I, we're, I'm, I forgot my freedom back, and uh, you only get one life. Yeah. Get yourself to Madrid if that's where you want to go. Just, just feel if he wants bit. to go, he wants to go. But I do think it's a bit disrespectful because he hasn't had. This, the last 18 months, I think he could yeah, it's have not had. Like he's, he's not like injury. becoming a Galactico signing for Real Madrid, is it? Injury, off-field issues. Maybe he's now going to start hitting form and he's talking about Madrid. I think, But I think there's a lot of Liverpool players that might be looking at... The, it could be the Klopp effect as well. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Well, those yeah. Van Dijk comments which you retracted straight away, wasn't yeah. it? That was a big seller. Uh, 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 yeah, I went with Diaz, didn't I? Yeah, yeah. 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 So defender so, to score... Have on... you done five already? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go for James Tarkovsky. Tarkovsky, who plays for Everton now, he's at Bournemouth. I'm going to go with the defender who plays for. Um, I'm going to go Aston Villa, and I'm no, I'm not. I'm going to go for. Mm, it's tough. It's tough. I'm going to go Chelsea, and I'm going to go with Desarsi. Nice. I'm going to go Chelsea keeper. I just in Roberto Sanchez is out, so I'm going to go for that Petrovic to keep Petrovic, a clean sheet. He's a good. He's a good bet. I'm going to go Vicario. Nice. Well, good luck. Hopefully I can get some points. It's been a while since I've done that. It's a great weekend of Premier League action. It's a double bank holiday weekend if you're an EFL fan, National League fan. Two big games for the Moors as well on their promotion plight. Um, Birmingham need a win. And if they don't, I'll be sad. We're going to film Tuesday, so we'll be out a little bit later on yeah, Tuesday, yeah, won't yeah, we? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Good. Uh, have a great Easter, everybody. Easter weekend. Obviously, Easter Sunday has completely and utterly wrecked my family plans. In some way, it's a positive because I don't have to go uh, out. I can just use football as the excuse. Yeah, um, you do? it's your job. Lots of football to watch over the weekend. And uh, also, yeah, please do give us your five-star reviews on Spotify and iTunes, wherever you, miss, you listen. Uh, we were talking before we went live, like we're boxing against the tide, if that even is a word, because, uh, you know, we're independent. We say what we think and I think you like it. So make sure you support it and tell your friends. Yeah, it's join the revolution. Yeah. Need a tagline like that. That's what a lot of corporate things would do, wouldn't they? Join the revolution, Yeah, not the... Be the evolution, join the revolution, not the... Um, you... And on that bombshell, yeah. thanks for watching. See ya.